some hackers basically got into Twitter super admin and was able to post as a bunch of users. And so they picked obviously prolific Twitter users, Obama, Kanye West. Elon Musk, I believe. Elon Musk. And it basically said, send us Bitcoin and we'll send you back double. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. As, as, <laughs> as like, a way of helping the community. Hello, techies. You're listening to another episode of Tech Society, a bi-weekly podcast with the founders of Ninja Software and unapologetic technocrats, Alex Dunmo and John Ewan. Welcome to another episode of Tech Society. You're with your hosts, Alex Donmo, that's me, and John Ewan. All right, we are the founders of Ninja Software, and we started Tech Society basically to discuss issues we care about, interview people with burning platforms, you know, just give a bit of a voice to the technology side of what's going on in our society, uh, which is a pretty loose thing that we can make work in any way we want. Tech right? could be anything. Yeah, it's great. So we used to do these... When we started, we did these episodes where you and I just had a chat about questions and things that are important to us. Bringing that back. Uh, we're bringing that back. So we're going to call it, I was thinking, Tech Society's Take. Take on things. Yeah. Tech Society's Take on things. Oh, I like that. Tech Society's Take on things. <laughs> yeah. Yes, that's what we're called now. <laughs> so this is the first episode of that. And we'll basically discuss items in the news that we've read and found that maybe people don't know the bigger picture on or they're just being hit by fud fear uncertainty and doubt in the media yeah it's it's bad for that now i think uh, our media one they don't understand technology they don't give a shit either Mm. and a lot of news gets underreported or misreported just like news on the news but on yeah yeah but on tech bent it's a nuanced take so we're not going to talk about things we don't understand you know we're not going to talk about um cancer research i have no medical degree me too so it'll just be on on topics we understand okay cool yeah. so if there's anything in the news that you've read that we don't end up talking about and you you want to maybe you're interested in our take hit us up i think we're going to do this on twitch too we haven't for this episode it won't be for this episode, but I think the next episode we'll actually do it on Twitch. So every Monday morning, yes, we will do a Twitch stream and then the episodes will be released on the Wednesday. So today is Monday, the 10th of August, and you'll hear this on Wednesday, the 12th of August. That's right. Yeah. And the Twitch will be on the 17th, hmm. if all goes to plan. So what are we talking about today? Uh, well, I think the, the big news right now, or at least big news in technology, is Trump banning wanting to ban tiktok has he banned it yet i don't I th- believe so can he even ban it i think is a question that i don't have an immediate answer for if you were the president of the united states and you were a uh, a very technical programmically you know capable one uh-huh. how would you you mean i knew the cyber <laughs> <laughs> how would you how would you ban tiktok in america only what would you do is it possible technically well you just need to ban it from the to be you ban its resale or you ban its sale so you can't sell the app so you'd actually have to get apple apple and, and google, google to remove it from the stores yeah is that feasible i don't think that's ever happened before so apparently uh trump is declaring a national emergency national a, security risk national right? security risk against uh p- several chinese popular chinese apps tiktok being the biggest one but we, wechat will yeah, also WeChat. be in there yeah. which I think is actually bigger news than TikTok. We do we we don't directly do business in China, but we we do business with people who do business in China and we we use WeChat. We have to use WeChat. So what then? You have to use WeChat to to deal with businesses in China, but but here in our country in Australia, no one really uses WeChat to communicate with each other anyway. Well, you would only use it to communicate with with the Chinese, obviously. That's what I mean. So yeah. you just cut that off. But in terms of there must be a lot of American business people having to use WeChat because they're doing business in China. So TikTok's the big news because it's more popular, but I would say WeChat is actually a bigger hit to the to the economy. Because of the business connection. Hmm. I mean, what, what is TikTok doing other than costing... What's the company? Uh, not Tencent. ByteDance. ByteDance, Byte Dance. of course. Yeah. We knew that. All right, so Trump says TikTok... Big emergency, 
they're, they're stealing everyone's data, they're giving it to the CCP. Mm -hmm. But really, is he just annoyed that some teenagers on TikTok embarrassed him at his, at his rally? Remember that? So, uh, cool. What's interesting is that there's, a, there's, a, there's an app in China called Douyin, which is TikTok version 2, right? And it actually represents what TikTok is about to become. And, and it's a place for advertising, marketing, commerce. There's an actual, there's an actual direct roadmap. Do you think that'd work in in the West? I, I, I'm I'm doubtful. But I want to go back to Donald Trump being embarrassed at his uh, at his rally. You remember this? This was back. Feels like a lifetime ago. Oh, the K-pop fans. I, I, yeah, I remember yeah. this. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 they bought all the tickets, right? Yeah. So K-pop group. Who was it? BTS. BTS. I'm assuming BTS. It says K-pop fans. If I, I remember correctly, that. they actually got everyone to buy tickets to the rally and yes. then didn't turn up. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Is that through and, TikTok? Uh, yeah, so that, that, that spread mainly through TikTok. Oh. So K-pop K -pop groups told their fans, TikTok this and buy tickets to Trump's mm. Tulsa event and hardly anyone showed up. I mean, which no one should have gone anyway. COVID-19 that's another topic for another day wow or is it? is it we could talk about it later but K-pop fans embarrass Trump using TikTok suddenly Trump cares about people's privacy it wasn't the rally some time ago I, I, yeah it was I'm about six, track of time. six or seven weeks ago I know it feels like a life everything oh, feels okay. like a lifetime ago <laughs> it's like well, when were the Australian bushfires oh no that was this year so you think you, you think this is the impetus for him to this is the impetus for his impotence. <laughs> for him to decide to ban TikTok. I do, I do. I, I don't think this has anything to do with data collection, privacy, anything like that. I sent you a... But in terms of data collection and privacy, TikTok is pretty bad. It's not great. It's mm. been shown to do... Like, they've, they've been caught doing things like... I think they're, they're recording, like, Wi-Fi names and things like that. But then, Or they're all guilty of it. Google, mm. Facebook... Apple, I sent you. I sent you a picture though. Uh, you probably haven't seen it yet, but I sent it to you. Right. So this actually demonstrates what permissions oh. for data, right? That that TikTok asks for versus Twitter and Facebook. Now, TikTok and Twitter are probably about the same, and they're definitely asking for more than they really need. But they're asking. This is just for permissions. But in terms of, but that's how they're getting the data to collect it from you, right? And Facebook yeah. is off the fucking charts and Facebook have been caught doing some real dodgy shit. Mm. I mean, we're all still pretty sure they're recording us talk, right? Mm -hmm. Like even when we're not. And they, they, I think they were caught just engaging the microphone constantly, right? Yeah, there's a 0%, 0% speaker to keep the app running. That's right. Or something yeah. like that. And um, the microphone was recording at the same time. So Yeah. Mm. We can't base we can't ban Facebook. It's uh it's proliferation US, is a US lot corporation. <laughs> it's proliferation is a lot greater in so, the US as well. A, a, you know, a few minutes ago you asked me if I was a you know a, a president who was familiar with cyber, <laughs> uh, what would I ban? What would I do? I'd ban TikTok for being shit. It's a pretty good app, honestly. <laughs> I I've seen people use it and the UX is amazing. It's really good at <laughs> addicting people. It is. It it's is. probably one of the best ones. That's probably I, why it's done so well. I would say when my when my partner was pregnant and she, you know, was obviously pretty couch bound because they're yeah, eight months pregnant. I would say TikTok took up a lot of her time. You're just flicking yeah. through videos, right? Yeah, and they're it's constant. Away. It's constant, like, constant hits of dopamine. But it actually really quickly. It actually works out what you like as well. I, I believe. Yeah, yeah. So. I think all she got was like cat videos. <laughs> <laughs> that's brilliant. So that's actually really impressive. But is it is it better than Vine? Is it just better than Vine because of the Vine was pretty great. But that's gone. So. And so it's sad. I have a few questions with this TikTok thing, with TikTok being banned. One, should it be banned? I mean, are we really scared about the CCP collecting data using using TikTok? What data are they collecting? Is it really a national security emergency? I don't think so. I don't think it's a national security risk. No. I think it's a, 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 a social risk where people would just get really stuck into it and memes spread a lot quicker on TikTok than other platforms. And hmm. I'm too old to really appreciate, you know, whatever it is TikTok does. But is it more dangerous than Facebook? Well, I don't think it spreads misinformation as fast as Facebook does. No. Nor does it create echo chambers about things that are completely wrong 
<laughs> whatever that may be. I don't think you can do that on TikTok. TikTok's just sharing videos and doing the dual video stuff. I, I must confess I've never actually used it. I've seen people use it. Yeah. I've linked, I've been linked to videos yeah, yeah. in the browser, but I, I'm an old bastard, so. But ultimately, I believe TikTok provides harmless fun, mm. addictive harmless fun, which is not as dangerous as whatever Facebook pushes. So in complete contrast to what the president is saying, uh, the CIA have actually said that the CIA has found no evidence China's Chinese government has accessed TikTok data. So the CIA and the intelligence community claims no evidence Chinese intelligence services have ever accessed data from TikTok. All this, this came out um, August 8th. So White House is pushing for it to be banned. The actual intelligence agency says not really concerned. And when you think about it, what data would the CCP even want that TikTok would be able to scrape? Like what data is TikTok scraping? I guess um, who you're calling, who you're messaging, who you're connected with. Mm. Chinese government just has to use Facebook for that. They don't even have to grab that data illegally. It's, already, it's freely available. Everyone's everyone's put all this data onto Facebook already. Who they're connected with, what they're what you know. But now you're talking about. Okay, so we're talking about TikTok. What about WeChat? No. I see. I see no reason for WeChat to be banned. I think anyone who installs WeChat a has to jump through hoops to get working in the West anyway. Uh, you was it? You have to have either a Chinese bank account. Or you needed someone to vouch someone for you. To vouch for you. That yeah. was already a WeChat member who yeah. had a primary, who had a bank account in China. It was, <laughs> yeah, it was a lot it's, of a, hoops. it's a pain in the ass. So, I mean, anyone who's installing WeChat has already made that conscious decision. Well, I'm, I'm working with people in China, or, or I have friends in China, or you know, I'm already, I'm already invested in China, and I've already decided that yeah. I'm okay with this data being read. I did, um, the funny story we had. <laughs> with WeChat was um, one of our staff members, right? Who said... Uh, he called me comrade. Yeah, and then he got banned. <laughs> it, it's, like the, it's like the only message he sent in all of WeChat history, <laughs> his own WeChat history. So it must have been that. It's very strange. <laughs> and then we had to get someone else in China to vouch for him again. <laughs> so WeChat being banned, I think that's going to affect Chinese American business which obviously Trump doesn't give a shit about. So what about Microsoft buying TikTok? I don't know how I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, look at Skype and see what happened to see what happened to Skype. So the interesting They've thing They ruined it. Bill Gates Bill Gates calls the deal a poisoned chalice. I mean, he doesn't really have any say in the company anymore, but I'm mm. sure Satya's is, is that how you pronounce it? Sat, Satya? Satya. Satya? Yeah. Um, I don't know. Any Indian listeners um let me know if I'm hamming that up Our apologies i only read his name like i don't think i've actually heard anyone other than me too, me too potentially ignorant white people say his name so he yeah i'm sure he at least will listen to gates gates says it's a poison chalice uh trump tried to block the deal well that was his i mean he probably tweeted about it of course try to block the microsoft purchase of yes so i thought, I thought he said he won't ban if microsoft purchased no it. no so so immediately uh trump's like oh, i'm gonna ban tiktok mm. now so TikTok's like fuck. What do we do? Let's sell because yeah, you know, I'm sure I'm sure TikTok doesn't make any money anyway. I'm sure it's fuck. I'm sure they're bleeding money. Mm. So sell to Microsoft. Microsoft are interested. Yeah, why wouldn't you sell it for a few billion dollars? I I, I believe the the founder is um, pretty eager for the deal to go through. He probably just wants out. So what's stopping them? Well, so Trump said he would block the deal. Oh, okay. That was the first thing, um, and then Microsoft went and talked to Trump, I believe. Pick up the phone and just... The red phone. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, well, when you're the CEO of a multi-billion dollar company, you probably <laughs> have um, fairly... <laughs> it's pretty chummy. Fairly easy access. And yeah, I think I think, uh, I think they managed to talk him into being open to it. Ah, okay. But he can't really... He can't actually directly block it, but I'm sure he could get in their way. So apparently, President Trump claimed last week that he was a day away from banning TikTok. That's... <laughs> He set a deadline of September 15th for Microsoft to conclude its potential acquisition and uh, avoid TikTok being banned. Okay. All right. So, Gates is wary of the acquisition, believes it's a poison chalice. Why is it a poison chalice? So, the, okay. So, the interesting thing is that Bill Gates says, you know, he's wary of them buying TikTok. He suggests that Facebook having more competition is probably a good thing. But that having Trump kill off the only competitor is pretty bizarre. So he makes a really strong point, and he, I believe he's hinting at 
potentially that Trump is, you know, killing TikTok, not because it's a national security risk, like he's claiming, but because it's a Facebook competitor. Because Facebook has definitely helped Trump with his campaigning. I don't think, I don't think there is a competitor to TikTok. I, I can't think of any. Oh, no, a competitor to Facebook. So TikTok is kind of like, yeah, okay, it's not, it's like, not quite Facebook, but it's like definitely vines. vines plus Twitter. It's definitely our competitor yeah. to Facebook. Okay. I mean, it's I would say the social platform. It's, social it's media. a social media platform. It has yeah. comments. It has networks. It's definitely taking attention away from Instagram. Mm-hmm. And if you take the youth away from Facebook, put them in TikTok, they're not Facebooking, which means they're not being exposed to all the alt-right conspiracies and shit that permeate through Facebook. So I think Gates thinks that Trump is actually operating to defend Facebook. So he's not banning TikTok because of China. He's banning TikTok because he wants to protect Facebook and protect his you know, network of, of bullshit through Facebook. So it doesn't actually say that out loud anywhere. Yeah. Just it through the poison chalice term. Yeah, I don't think Gates would never come out swinging <laughs> like that. But, you know, he's um, expressing his views in a way that I think anyone with a bit of caution, tact, insight, or just if you, you know, insight into, into Gates' words, you'd be like, okay, he's, um, mm. he's saying that they're not they're not trying to get rid of tiktok for the reasons they're claiming and that's and i, I agree with that but to, to sum up to sum up how i feel about tiktok i think trump is banning it because he was embarrassed and china is a great scapegoat you know he he, he bangs the drum against china it's and true he does project out mm. so that is a vengeance for to someone or something because of the rally k-pop <laughs> the k-pop interjection of the rally and now microsoft and it's now you, you believe he's trying to protect facebook yeah getting, oh yeah bringing yeah. it in he knows that facebook is pretty much what's well, the only social media network that hasn't shut down all of their ploys hmm. twitter is constantly banning um the bots that are propagating alt-right conspiracies but facebook's doing fuck all about it okay so and and I would be surprised if Zuckerberg didn't have a fairly direct line to Trump. That's my conspiracy theory. <laughs> that Zuckerberg is... It makes sense. It makes a lot more sense than national security anyway. That's right. And then you have... What's the word I'm looking for? So they're like fairly popular Democratic um, politicians coming out saying that you know Facebook needs to be broken up or regulated. I think um, Elizabeth Warren was big on that. Mm. Uh, obviously she's not going to be president but that idea is obviously living in the democratic party mm. uh, whereas the republicans are definitely using facebook to spread opinions the, yeah the, it's it's <laughs> the it's it's a network where they basically turn your drunk uncle into a foaming at the mouth racist and that's all i have to say about that <laughs> so, so yeah well, okay all right, so let's conclude yeah some of my feeling TikTok doesn't deserve to be banned. I agree. It does need to be probably investigated, for, but 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 so does Facebook and Twitter and, and a bunch of other apps. In fact, there should be like a, a, a security audit done on all of these apps, I believe. But Facebook deserves the most attention on that one. Do I like TikTok? No, I fucking hate TikTok. <laughs> so like, I wouldn't actually be upset if it got banned. I think it's an unproductive way to use your time you know like youtube's full of bullshit but at least you go on youtube you can learn how to change oil in your car yeah like twitter like, tiktok is not about that tiktok is about just fast food into your brain mm. you know here's a picture here's a video of a cat here's a video of a guy miming here's you know like <laughs> like constant attention deficit disorder yep bang 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 so that, I would be actually fairly happy if it got banned, apart from the fact that it's it's bullshit. It shouldn't be banned. Yep. It's um, the principle. Now, should it Microsoft... Has, it has the right to exist. Should Microsoft buy TikTok? I don't know what they'd get from it. Mm. Yeah, you know, I, I don't believe it makes any money. I think it adds to their portfolio, though. Yeah, but they keep trying to add stuff to their portfolio and they keep fucking it up, so... Skype. <laughs> Skype. It was amazing. Well, how do you think this will turn out? 
we've got September 15th. Is that right? I don't... Make your predictions now, then we can revisit in a few weeks. Okay, that's tough. That's really tough. I don't think... I don't think it'll get banned because I think that requires a bit too much follow through and um, and like Trump can't do it on his own so he has to work with other people to make it happen and mm. I, I don't think he has the the will or the capital uh, will Microsoft buy I think Microsoft will buy TikTok and I, I think I reckon they were already having talks and I think I reckon the founder of TikTok probably wants out well why, why wouldn't he right like I think I think everything will stay the same the way it is right now in a, in a month. Ah, that's a safe bet. <laughs> that's a because, safe bet. Because uh, in, a, in a month, yeah, you're probably right. Well, it's you're probably right. Yeah, September yeah. 15th. Okay. Right. So, but I think that the deal will still be going on. Yeah, there's al- there's always going to be talks, but there will be other parties involved, namely the CCP, and they yeah. will prevent things that are not in their interest, which involves, which includes Microsoft purchase, Microsoft's purchase of TikTok. So, oh, but um, Microsoft will be buying the US operations of TikTok, so they can't stop that. Mm. They can't stop that. And, and the Chinese TikTok, which I... Um, Do yin, yeah. yeah, will continue. Yeah. And and is it is it actually important to the CCP? I doubt it. I I'd doubt <laughs> it. I think they've got so many... They've got so many sleeper apps out there. Like Tencent. Look at Tencent. Everything Tencent owns mm. is potentially a, a data stream. Maybe. I, mean, I, I don't want to start these conspiracy theories. But yeah, I, I think the deal will continue on. I think Microsoft will eventually buy TikTok and hopefully Trump will be voted out of office. That's in November. Yeah. So we'll return to that in November. All right. So what else is in the news? Before we continue this podcast, here's a message from our sponsor. We believe that you can create art and beauty with technology. We think big. We move quietly. We are Ninja Software. And we're back. Topic number two. Okay, so uh, I think it's pretty big news that I don't think most people are aware of is the Twitter hack. The Twitter hack. The Twitter, I would call it the <laughs> Twitter hack. I think I, I, I don't remember any other big Twitter hack. You know, it's, it's a pretty big one last month. Last month? It says here, um, this article was posted 1st of August. So what have happened in July? Mm. Which is kind of weird. That was like three weeks ago at the time of recording where a lot of prolific people try to request Bitcoin from their followers, including yeah, so Barack Obama. Uh, yeah, pretty, pretty big uh, accounts. Elon Musk. Funnily enough, not ones that are in like triple security lockdown like President Trump. <laughs> yeah, interesting. Yeah, which makes me think... All right, uh, we'll get we'll get back to this. Okay, so <laughs> so the story is some hackers basically got into Twitter Super Admin and was able to post as a bunch of users. And so they picked obviously prolific Twitter users: Obama, Kanye West, Elon Musk, I believe. Elon Musk, and it basically said, "Send us Bitcoin, and we'll send you back double." Yeah. Um, yeah. as, as, <laughs> as like a way of helping the community the, the, the classic you remember the Bill Gates spam emails you would get he's like you know if you send if you send ten dollars here I'll send you a million dollars okay explain to me how did these guys get into Twitter and and pull off this this scam as always it seems to be the weakest link in the chain mm-hmm. humans a bunch of social engineering and I, I think Twitter actually runs uh, all the operations through Slack Yes. So it's just a matter of getting access to that. So Slack is a chat tool. People use it in operations. Yeah, it- programmers um, use it a lot for just communicating and integrating with their services as well. I so think a lot of remote workers use it. Yeah, right? like yeah. So I'm use, guessing Twitter yeah. uses it for everything. And somehow this guy, Mr. Clark, a 17-year-old from city of Tampa, yep. 30 felony charges, and he, he got access to the Slack somehow I don't think they really disclosed that and then there was a and he may have just signed up he may <laughs> no, have found no way, their, no uh, way. Uh, maybe they've got like a you know hidden slack URL and sometimes you can just register right okay like if you're a paid account well he got access to the slack and from there he got credentials for Twitter support now I read they were pinned to the support channel the super user <laughs> login right 
So for anyone listening who doesn't understand what that is, a super user is a administrative account where you can essentially do everything. Everything, yeah. Mm. Including impersonate users. <clears throat> yeah. Which now, is what happened here. I have several problems with this, but I think the, the, the first step is knowing that it was a two-factor authentication. They did have two-factor authentication, so that wasn't where the hack ended, right? Yeah. He had to then... So, they, so, you got the, so the, in the pinned message in Slack, there was a yeah. username and password. Yeah. You sign in as that, but it will send a, typically an SMS to your yeah. phone for a, an additional code to, to sign in. Which is weird. This is a shared account. That makes me wonder. Maybe they're using an authenticator type app, mm. more likely. Yeah. And then they did a phone spear phishing attack on Twitter. No, I think a bunch of employees. Twitter employees, right? Yeah. Social engineering. So social engineering is, I mean, most hacks, I think, are social engineering. It's the easiest way to get things done. Yeah. So everyone's worried about the hacker in the basement. You know, China, the Chinese or the Russians or the Vietnamese or the communist parties trying to Mr. Robot style yeah yeah like you know Linux console hacking everyone <laughs> uh, but more likely someone calls someone on the phone and scams them out of their password yep I think I think the most successful penetration uh, strategy is actually the old USB in a confidential envelope dropped in the toilets <laughs> Well, this is basically a similar thing where, yeah, again, the humans somehow passed on their uh, two-factor codes to yeah. this 17-year-old boy. So to anyone listening, never tell anyone a security code, ever. Mm. There's never any... No one will ever call you on the phone and say, hey, I've just sent you a code to verify you. Tell me what the code is. Never. <laughs> so just don't do it. If you get a text message saying security code blah and you're talking to someone on the phone and they ask you for it you do not ever give them it so someone did and someone did. he had the username password and the two-factor code and then he got access to twitter support super admin actually so they targeted 130 accounts managing to tweet from 45 of them uh, they accessed the direct message inboxes as well and downloaded a lot of data which mm -hmm. would be pretty interesting data i gotta say and then yeah they basically tried this tried this this bitcoin scam so i am giving back to my community due to COVID 19 all bitcoin sent to my address below will be sent back doubled if you send a thousand dollars i will send back two thousand dollars from barack obama himself and then they put the code only doing this for the next 30 minutes enjoy <laughs> apparently they made a hundred thousand dollars out of this yeah, 117 117 thousand yeah, dollars it was actually not in, in that much minutes. anything about it I, I, I bet when I'm going to tell Well, you my this. first question is, anyone who owns Bitcoin should already be wary of any kind of scam. That is the... I'm so surprised that yeah. my Bitcoin brothers would do this. It's so strange. But I guess you get a tweet from Barack Obama and you're like, oh shit, is this real? I'd be like, why is Barack Obama asking for Bitcoin? It's so strange. Uh, well, yeah. Yeah. Why, why does he need me to send him money before he'll send me money? Like, yeah. It's, it, it doesn't make sense. This kind of critical there. thinking should... Uh, the critical thinking to know that this is a scam should be painfully clear to anyone who's been in Bitcoin for a while. And people who are in, people who own any Bitcoin should have already jumped all the hoops needed to, to be clear of any scams anyway. They should but, have the ability to detect this kind of stuff. But you've got services like Coinbase that uh, have made it fairly easy for the average person, especially the average American, That's true. to jump That's on true. these platforms. So Coinbase is a, a website, a web app, hmm. that you can log into and just buy, sell, transfer Bitcoins and other cryptocurrencies and, from the app. And actually Coinbase are what limited the damage of the scam because they blocked transactions on their network to that bitcoin address so that's the power of uh, a centralized service and they are they're definitely correct me if i'm wrong but they are the biggest they're pretty big i don't know if they're the biggest but um in, in the u.s they're probably one of the biggest yeah biggest blockchain marketplaces right mm. okay so now these guys got caught really fucking quickly <laughs> really fucking especially, quickly. especially for a um, government agent investigation level quick turns out the way they were caught was they had used the same Bitcoin address 
for legitimate transactions on a is, right, marketplace that, forum. That thing you have there, which is the, the Bitcoin address. Yeah. It's always unique and it's always Googleable. But right? So you can just search that and you actually find out everywhere it pops up on the internet. Yeah. So the FBI Googled the address and found they'd used it on a forum called OG Users. Now, uh, I'm not familiar with OG Users, but according to Google, it's a community-driven digital marketplace. So, so they must have had an account on the, the accepts payment in that address. Now, when these guys had used this, they did not use a VPN. Hmm. So when the FBI requested the copy of the, the forum database, they had IP address, they had email addresses, all pointing to the real people. So these hackers, not that smart. <laughs> Obviously smart enough to perform this hack, but not smart enough to cover their traces in a real simple way. Because you can just create a Bitcoin address, right? Yeah, so a, a Bitcoin wallet has unlimited addresses you can generate from it. There's multiple addresses in a single wallet. And it's discouraged to use a, one address. So that's probably confusing for our listeners who don't All right, okay, understand so. Bitcoin. <laughs> so let's just say that a Bitcoin, everyone has a Bitcoin, well, everyone. People that are in Bitcoin have a wallet. Yes. Right? Now, what, what is a wallet? A wallet is a collection of addresses, right? And and you can generate new addresses easy peasy. And an address in a Bitcoin wallet is like an account in your bank. Can you connect an address to a wallet? No. I mean, only if you use it more than once. If you, if you post the address more than once, like on here, you will be able to, you'll, be, you'll be able to connect using you know, basic forensics you can connect the people with other platforms and then mm -hmm. do what ha do what they did here but if I stay anonymous <coughs> the entire time using these Bitcoin addresses then it's going to be harder for them to track me right yeah so Bitcoin is pseudonymous not anonymous yeah so there's can you a, explain there's, 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 what was that yeah so if your address is ever linked to your pers um, to your account or to your profile yeah it's linked forever it's not anonymous. It just has a pseudonym, basically. Essentially, there's an open transaction history, right? So you once you put money in, once you take money out, like that's all traceable. You yes, can't move any money around Bitcoin without it being publicly accessible that that transaction happened, right? Yes, but your multiple addresses in your wallet are not linked in any way. It looks like no. different people. Okay. So what they should have done is have that address on Twitter and never use it ever again. It should have just been used for the scam, right? right? And just generate another address and use it for this marketplace. Yeah. Now, uh, how would they get their money out? From, okay, so they would transfer it to another address. Mm -hmm. That is public, but you don't actually know who owns that destination address in the end, you know? So, so like, so Barack Obama, the the real Barack Obama, uh, has requested bitcoins to this address. Mm -hmm. You receive the bitcoins in that address, and you pass it on to another address, which you also own, but no one knows that because you generated a new one. But then you can still track that. So, how do you get to the point where? Because, I mean, I'm how sure. How do you how do you anonymize it, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so there's there's services called mixers or mm -hmm. tumblers, and they're basically a service that you send bitcoin in. It, it spreads it out, it mixes it all over the place to all these other people and comes back to you. Now, but using, using good enough forensic tools, you'll probably be able to track that transaction, right? So that's something I have been working on in the past where my assumption was if you ever send uh, a whole number mm -hmm. of Bitcoin to someone, because that, that's probably you or someone that you know. So there's actually ways to connect addresses together. But it's all like inference. It's yeah. not. It's not uh, unless unless you actually publicize the public key. So, would do you believe that let's say government agencies are tracking all the Bitcoin transactions and using tools to try and map transactions going through these tumblers? And second question, addendum question. <laughs> Would you be concerned if you were the scammer or let's say drug dealer or something that these tumblers are actually honeypots for the government agencies? That's a real risk. And I've never used a mixer or a tumbler hmm. because I don't control that. But the problem is for the tumblers to work, you do need a large amount of traffic into that tumbler, right? That's right. It's like if you're the only user, then it's easily tracked. That's correct. That's yeah. correct. So usually what you'd have to do, not that I condone any black market stuff, is, is to work off grid. 
So you'd have to meet someone, exchange hands face to face and just convert cash. But then your blockchain, your Bitcoin transactions are still trackable to them though. So they need a way to move that money. That's, and their, that's, that's their problem though. Yeah. Okay. So, so Bitcoin is not anonymous. It's a public ledger. That's right. right? It doesn't so, change the fact that everyone sees where everything's going. You just don't know who owns what address. Okay. So right away, we can say that these guys probably didn't understand Bitcoin very well. Perhaps. Perhaps. <laughs> and there was a lot of smart asses responding to the scam tweets yep. with, you should have used Monero, right? That's right. Everyone says that. All right. What is Monero? Monero is the non-pseudonymous part. So it's fully anonymous. Fully anonymous. However, it's just not being used as much. People use Bitcoin because it's what people pay for. There's demand for it. There's no demand for Monero. You can move stuff into Monero and then back into Bitcoin, right? Yes. So you'd use a decentralized exchange, a DEX, and then you can convert Bitcoin to Monero. Does Coinbase transact uh, Monero? Not sure. My um my transaction. I, never, I haven't transacted in Coinbase before, but I would. So yeah, if, if someone converted to Monero, then found a buyer for Monero, then they're pretty good, right? Mm. But where would you find a buyer for Monero? That's that's the that's the last bit of the chain that that people don't really think about is that there's no demand for it in in the market. Yeah, mm. it's pretty clear that to me it's it's pretty clear that they didn't really understand well just how anonymity works in in a, in a holistic sense anyway mm. a, a network can be anonymous reddit technically can be anonymous right uh, but as soon as you as soon as you make posts yeah as soon as uh, you link it to yourself and there's there's a great service great services on online that digs through your post history and just tells you everything about you yeah it tries and it's, to make assumptions it's and, scarily yeah. accurate <laughs> You know, and you knew where I live, how big my family was, just from posts I made over, you know, 10 years. And, and these guys protected their, obviously protected their identity when they were like uh, hacking into Twitter. You know, they obviously used services to anonymize themselves there, but then didn't do it on the, on the marketplace, the they just, legitimate marketplace. They reused an address. Yeah. That, that's, that's what links well, they, everything together. But they obviously um, didn't use a VPN. Hmm. They, they by the articles it seems like they used legitimate email addresses to you know like they they connected their illegal life with their real life mm. and this is what happened with um super quick um silk road as well yeah so actually a lot of people don't realize how he was found out he used the, he reused an email asking for support yeah yeah he was on uh, stack overflow and he asked for support on basically creating a server on that's right on, on tour on the on the darknet yeah yeah so yeah he got caught the same way yeah <laughs> fully had this idea to create a, a, an illegal operation and didn't protect himself the whole way through i think the problem is it used to start off as a hobby project and mm. at some point it turned into this thing that needed to be extremely private you yeah. know and he didn't he didn't click over until too late he probably he's probably switched to a private email at some point and private everything at some point VPNs and stuff, but too late. The information was already out there. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And so it, you it need just, to basically change your identity as soon as you decide to do it for real. It, w it wasn't enough to convict him, mm. but it was enough to cast to find him suspicion on him. And then they just watched him. They watched him to the point where they knew his schedule, and then I think the 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 real like where they got him was they waited for him to log in to all this stuff in a library, right? Yeah, that's now, right. FBIS swooped, grabbed him before he could lock his computer and bam, he's fucked. <laughs> like, I think he's gone to prison for a billion years. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, give or take a thousand. Yeah, I mean, he, he made some really crucial mistakes that I I can't sympathize with him. Well, in hindsight, you can say that, but if... <laughs> If you were there creating a, a totally illegal marketplace, I would be so fucking careful. Yeah, like <laughs> super careful. Like even before you realize that this was going to become a thing, you know, a yeah. lot of people create things for fun, and then maybe I'll create a marketplace, and I'm like, oh, this is now I'm this can be millions of dollars. This can be reapplied yeah. to, to, you know, and I think political. Like, but this is what where I was going with like my sympathy for him. If if that if that marketplace was purely used to sell drugs i'm ideologically okay with it i mean i'm not i don't think it's the correct solution for um you know the, the trading of pharmaceuticals but i don't believe 
that they should be illegal. Mm. I think they should be regulated and controlled, you know, like like what America is doing with with marijuana right now. I think that's you know, that's the way things should go with pretty much all um, recreational drugs. Mm -hmm. So if he was just facilitating that and and there's no doubt that online trading of drugs has made drug deals safer. You know, there's probably less violence. There's there's more um funnily enough there's more accountability uh, <laughs> for the quality of drugs yeah you know because they're reviewing each other right it's like uber like wow well, you know <laughs> he's he sent me rat poison you know almost <laughs> died you know one star <laughs> yeah um if that was it if that's all he'd done i'd be like you know that guy is a libertarian hero yeah. except he tried to have people killed they traded firearm illegal firearms and and actually um they had like assassination services on, on, on the marketplace like he went he grew out of scope yeah, they started off as a he, nice he went through that gray zone but the problem is when you have when you have an ideological when you're an ideological libertarian and you're like all these things should be open market eventually you get to the point where you need to censor because <laughs> it starts to go into zones that you know, like pedophilia i think there was there was child porn on there uh there's tons of shit that you know it's just bad news mm. right it doesn't matter what your ideology is but when you're like oh i don't censor then you start to see what the world has to offer yeah anyway so i still believe that it was a spectrum of like hobby turning into a real project mm. and and, and, and realizing that the bit where it flips over it's very hard when you're the one building it yeah because you're, like, you're like messing around coding at night it's, you know oh, this is pretty cool fun project yeah yeah i'm gonna build a marketplace and it's gonna be anonymous yeah you know it's back to these twitter guys though mm. they w they knew what they were doing right from the start oh yeah but and then they actually did they did a good job the only problem was the well, they hacked twitter very yeah that was that was a concerted direct effort and effective and it worked and they got in right yeah. which is really cool for them um at the time not anymore mm -hmm. uh but it was the just that the copy the a bitcoin address is a unique token on the entire internet yeah they and didn't, they reused it they mm. didn't realize that as soon as you use it twice it's actually, it's actually common no, oh, not common knowledge it's best practice to regenerate accounts whenever you receive crypto in, a, in an address you, yeah. re, you never use it ever again for this specific purpose actually it's in, the, it's in the white paper as well and a lot of wallets discourage it so um if you use an address it actually grays it out and disables the address really mm. Mm. because people don't realize the implications of reusing an address mm. um I, in, in early in my crypto journey i did reuse addresses as well so what are the implications for reusing addresses it means that someone can just search the address and see it all over the internet every single time you've used it because Google indexes bloody everything. So then they can start creating a profile for what you're easily what you're doing with your money and yeah, and, and, then, and that might be the ATO or the IRS. That's right, right. and <laughs> and you can see who you sent it to. Not that we condone uh, <laughs> tax avoidance. No, it's highly illegal and, and <laughs> not encouraged by us at all. No, no, but. No. Uh, so I, I did use because there's these um, I had addresses that I reused early in the day. Mm. I'm, I'm a long time crypto user and it was you know it's and you're, you're pretty like it's pretty easy to find you on the internet yes um <laughs> i just uh, i google your uh, username don't, don't and you're like <laughs> don't tell anyone you don't want everyone to know no and like there's your twitch account yes oh, you're, you're everywhere i am everywhere i've i've become that that username needs to change at the same time like at least there is a way to find you on the internet because if i google john you and like i i, I have a very common first name and i also have a very common surname so yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm in a deep dark pool <laughs> yeah. of john yeah. Ewing. Um, but yeah so yeah crypto addresses are pretty unique you know so if i if i google your username that you've had since you're a teenager mm. right and then i find one of these wallet addresses yep and i start googling that like i can start creating a picture on you and even if maybe you, you don't want me to know you know like that even if i didn't it. even if i didn't reuse my address yeah. and you went into the blockchain and looked at all the transactions that I made with that address, you can search all those addresses I've sent to mm. and see who they are. Start creating a profile. Maybe some of those are public addresses for services. A lot of them are. There might be an exchange. It mm. might be Coinbase. It might be um, Mt. Gox back in the day. Yeah. Or and maybe you paid for some like weird porn thing you don't want anyone yeah, else to know about. You know, like. <laughs> you know, that kind of uh, hypothetical stuff. Yeah, totally hypothetical. So that's, that's the risk. And, yeah. 
and the it's just that as soon as you use an address people will find it because google will find it yeah and that's just a fact and that's just what people need to be aware of when well, it comes and, to bitcoin and google's one thing i'm sure the government is at least tracking this data it's easy it must be it's yeah, easy it's you all just, open it's all public as soon as you connect your bitcoin client you actually synchronize the entire blockchain and all its history into your pc hmm. because it's on your pc locally you can actually tra- um you can actually search through it super easy yeah it, it's a it's a ledger it's like really roll it's a very well organized clean data ledger my biggest issue with these guys is they perform this fairly like com- complex hack like you know they put a lot of effort into it mm. right and it was just to scam people out of money and that bothers me i you know, like they did say it was a charity hack and they will use it for a good cause later that's what that they said bullshit bullshit <laughs> but the you mean you go back in time right and the, the early hackers even the ones that caused quite a lot of disruption it was it was often to it's often just out of kind of curiosity and you know maybe a rebellious spirit and you know they would deface things and it was never there was that like hacker culture it, they don't condone any so it's more of a, more of a prank than a than anything else yeah right? this this just feels like crime <laughs> it's just crime you know like yeah if someone like if someone had hacked twitter and then you know said something controversial using one of these accounts like i'd be like that is cool yeah it's bad i don't condone the illegal behavior but you know, I get it, <laughs> but just to hack into it, just, just to just to steal, just to scam people out of money, like you're just a criminal. Mm. You're just a criminal. Like, and and it, yeah, I I I I miss that hacker culture. I think it's I think it's it's gone now. The internet is just too mainstream, and the rewards are too big, and the exploits are too low. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's hard. It's yeah. There's there's more money in protecting. I, I think the I think the guys are still out there, right? There's, there's still these people with that hacker uh, mentality who are you know they're they're breaking breaking down things and figuring things out. But then they just sell that exploit. You got the zero day marketplaces, and they just sell that exploit. And they're not technically breaking any laws. They're making decent money off mm. their work. And um, and then it's just you know Russian crime gangs and people like that scamming people out of money like yeah you know it's, it's a shame a, it's, these, a, it's a lost it's a lost art these guys uh it was cynical it was deliberate and i'm glad they got caught and i i don't believe their bullshit claim that they were going to give it to charity that is <laughs> fucking nonsense because if that was their actual reason for doing it they literally just could have tweeted from these accounts saying you know donate to this charity and you know what probably more money would have been transacted than a hundred thousand dollars they would have done more good more good yeah so that's bullshit they were just stealing people's money and there you have it folks tech society's position on uh, social (laughs) engineering do it for pranks not to steal (laughs) yeah or if you you are going to give your money to charity just do it directly (laughs) (laughs) let's go now to a new section okay new segment that I'm calling John's Tech Bench. Tech Bench. Hey, welcome yeah. to John's Tech Bench. So this weekend, I've been working on a very long-term project. Yes. I believe we've been discussing this for three years now. Yes. And it, it kind of, it's relevant to the kind of backstory of, um, of Ninja Software. So in our old office, we were on two floors. So we're just in a new office. Um, and for context sake, if you're watching the video, this is our basement this is the temporary recording studio we've set up for now and in the old office every time you needed to go to the toilet you had to walk all the way downstairs what's Mm. it like 15 second walk and then someone's already there and dangerous stairs by the way anyone who visited (laughs) our old office can can back us up here very steep nine was a 1920s building right yeah it was and very you know every time you walked on these steps you took your life into your own hands and yeah we only had one toilet and we were not the only people in this in this building that's right so 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 wouldn't you hate busting to pee coming downstairs and then going back upstairs because it's taken we only had one toilet for like 30 people or 20 people at the time (laughs) well actually if you include the other people in the building it would be 25 30 people yeah yeah pretty sure it's against against code but yeah so 
to resolve this problem, we needed a, a wireless, wireless device that just tells you if someone's in the toilet. <laughs> surprisingly, surprisingly simple uh, solution, simple problem, but not solved by any products today. Okay, so there's nothing on the market. <laughs> there probably is, but you know, it's just more fun to build it yourself. <laughs> All right, so uh, there were several ideas for a solution, right? Got, yeah, like, so laser we had, gateway. We had capacitance alfoil thing. We had distance sensor, which I built last week, but uh, was scrapped because of privacy concerns of tracking <laughs> distances from toilets. Uh, so this is version two of the the project I call the integrated circuit for uplink of position, pronounced ICUP. <laughs> <laughs> and it's all about it's all about condition reporting for field operations. I call it. Okay. So that's this what is, it is. Um, this is ICUP V2. This is urination IoT. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. So, uh, this may or may not work. Oh, we've got a loading screen right, too. Uh, can we show yeah, the we can see camera? It. The yeah, it's on there. Right. You can uh, see it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. standing up. That's sweet. Oh, it's upside down. Very cool. Hang on. That was the Ninja Software logo doing a bit of a yeah. There you go. Bit of a dance. That's is that a question mark? There we go. All right, so there's two pieces. We have this this single device here. Mm -hmm. It's the receiver. And it says M and F, which is the male and female toilets. Circle. Cool, so yeah, we now have two toilets. That's right. We've upgraded. Double. We do not share our building with anyone. So. That's right. We have twice as many toilets, <laughs> which is a big deal for us. Massive deal. Massive deal. So the O means vacant. And the M is the male toilets and the F is the female toilets. We have another device here, which is off screen. My cable's too short. And it has a reed switch. Oh God, I can't really see. And the read switch basically transmits. Um, so for our audio only listeners, we have a circuit board here with a pretty basic, what is that? Five, mm -hmm. uh, 10 by 10? Is that 10 uh, by 16 by 16. 16 by 16 L LCD display. Mm -hmm. LED matrix and yeah. it has the loading screen and it has, it just basically tells you what's the status of <laughs> the toilets nearby. Cool. Okay, right. cool. What so, this is a read switch, which is barely in camera here. But yep. the read switch basically is a switch that is enabled with magnets. Okay, explain. So, like when you open a fridge door, mm -hmm. it basically turns the light on yep. without actually physically changing a switch. It's just the distance. So, there's probably a, a pretty decent percentage of our listeners who actually don't know how the fridge turns the light off and on. Oh, so. right, yeah. Okay. So <laughs> Inside the switch is like a little moving metal bit, and then there's another piece that, when it gets close to it, actually activates the switch. Mm -hmm. So what happens is there's a wireless uh, serial um, wireless connection from here to the other device. Okay, right? so we have basically two two boxes. Basically. Two boxes. Yep. One's a transmitter, one's a receiver. The transmitter sits in the toilet and just detects when someone's well when the door is closed. Okay. And then sends a packet of each toilet status. Mm -hmm. to the other box so if i put these close together like that yep so you got mx male is male is not vacant remove it mo cool the other one here uh like that now the female is taken yeah female is available and that's it nice <laughs> so as long as people leave the door so you close the door open when you're done oh it actually um the way it's set up now it actually opens by itself Oh. So if you leave the toilet, it opens. Okay. So yeah. Yes. So the idea is that yeah. on the door hinge, you just put these two together and it will basically know um, if it's vacant. Easy. It sounds easy. Yeah. There's a lot more technical stuff that goes into this. Uh, we've got the LED display. We've got the wireless chip. Yep. Uh, we've got power supply and the Arduino. On this one, we have two read switches, which I've described before. Mm -hmm. We have the wireless receiver and also the Arduino, and we've also got a power supply as well. A lot of the um, a lot of the work was in um, programming. Ooh, it's question marks now. Why is it question marks? Okay, oh. so uh, for our listeners, the <laughs> LCD display has now put male and female as question mark. So, yes, so it's because it's lost connection somehow. Ah, okay. Yeah, don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> Something went loose. So. When you install oh, this, oh, it's short. It's the um, <laughs> the LED display is shorting 
it's the pins on the back of it shorting itself. So oh. anyway, <laughs> now, now I can see it. So when you set this up, we'll connect this to our company chatbot who will actually just tell us when. Yeah, unless people are a bit uh, self-conscious about declaring whether or not they're in the toilet. So it's, it's but you'd want to know the status of the toilet. And you will, actually, if you were self-conscious, you would want everyone to know that you're in the toilet. Cause, <laughs> Don't yeah. come in. That's right. Yeah. yeah. But it's actually, uh, it was a fun project. Uh, I built it in about a day. Um, and it's, it's, it's the, hard, the hardest part was actually uh, the sending the data from one to the other. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think you find, a lot of people don't realize this, but wireless transmissions are very lossy. Mm. So uh, it sends one character at a time. So, but the actual packet is like six characters. It's like toilet one, available, toilet two, you know? Yep. So you need to introduce, it's getting a bit deeper into technical, a, a deeper technical dive. Uh, you actually need to have start markers and end markers, which are angle brackets. Mm-hmm. You need another character that declares the length of the packet and you need the receiver to just listen and store into a buffer the full packet and then decode it. But it works really well. And we're going to install it today and see how we go. That'll be fun. Uh, do we have the chatbot side done yet? Or we'll have to implement that. So Arduinos do not connect to Wi-Fi. Okay. Um, there are what about this unit here? Also, also Arduino. So these ah. are these are just embedded systems. They don't have any operating system. Okay. It's a real-time OS. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we'd have to connect it to a gateway of some sort, probably a Raspberry Pi, which mm-hmm. can receive, uh, which can connect to this wireless chip and also receive serial communications. So that's cool. a third device, third box I have to build. And then from there, it's just a matter of building more things, maybe a uh, door opening, closing for the office, uh, temperature sensors, noise sensors. We start to build a little cluster of, uh, you know, IoT, IoT sensors. Yes, right. Yeah. Cool. So, yeah, right. that's John's Tech Bench, number yeah. one. Thank you for listening. <laughs> There's more to come. I've been yeah. building lots right. and lots of crazy things. All right. I look forward to the next episode. <laughs> oh, the, cool. the next, the next John's Tech Bench. Oh, okay. Cool. <laughs> tech Bench. I think that pretty much covers everything we wanted to talk about for this week. I'm sure Trump will do some random shit that Newsworthy will invalidate stuff. everything we've already talked about. That's right. I can't <laughs> wait. So we'll, uh, we'll return with the next episode and talk about that. Yeah. So if you're interested in anything that's happened in the news, especially with a technology ban or even just business, uh, jump on the Twitch stream, which will be in the description. Maybe. Maybe and send us your questions or email us your questions through the contact form through the, yeah jump on the jump on the website make sure you're on our on our newsletter and and maybe tweet us at tech society and the website is techsociety.fm that's right all right thanks everyone have a great rest of the week hump day bye <laughs>